Hello everybody, good morning. It is me, Vincent, coming to you from a beautiful, lovely Epcot parking lot. We're doing a Disney vlog today, and that is because I wanted to ride Guardians of the Galaxy, okay? Guardians is still under the virtual line right now, so you can't like just like pop in later in the evening. I have to dedicate a day off to getting a virtual line early in the morning to ride Guardians of the Galaxy, which I did. So I'm here now. I got boarding group eight, which is the earliest I've ever gotten for this ride. It's definitely a lot earlier than I thought I was gonna get. Usually I've been getting around 60, which lets me get here at like 11 o'clock and enjoy the ride. But now I'm here right at park open. Sometimes you get 60, sometimes you get eight. You don't really know with the virtual line. And the early boarding group kind of set a little dent in my plans because I wanted to go to Animal Kingdom today as well to do Everest because I haven't done that in forever and also see the new Finding Nemo show or like the the retooled Finding Nemo show but I can't park hop until 2 p.m. so <laughs> I'm gonna be here really early at Epcot and I have to like twiddle my thumbs until I can cross over to Animal Kingdom because there's not really anything else I want to do at Epcot right now. I'm also like 30 minutes late to my boarding group because they called us immediately when the park opened and it was very busy at the parking lot entrance. So uh, hopefully that doesn't really matter too much. All right, I got a little bit of a Disney life hack for you if you're trying to get to Guardians faster. If you cut through the Starbucks right at the entrance of the park and kind of go through the back and spit out through the Connections Eatery, it'll actually give you a really great shortcut to Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Instead of having to walk through all of this, you could just cut through Starbucks and end up right here. I've yet to get Conga. I really, really want the song Conga on the ride. I've gotten Iran, which is great, and I think it's gonna be the actual best. Um, September is really fun as well, but I gotta have Conga. I wanna ride with Conga, Gloria Stefan, come on! The light casts moving shadows across the city. <coughs> Something Xandar is famous for. You made it! I mean, of course you did. Nova Prime, they're ready. was done we got on cosmic rewind for the day and it is still only 10 30 baby we'll say i'm a little disappointed i did get everybody wants to rule the world again which i think out of all the songs i've done has been my least favorite um i was hoping for conga or that sweet sweet september but that's okay maybe another day when i get a chance to ride again i will hopefully get a different song all in all pretty decent time here at guardians of the galaxy it was just okay you know why it was just okay because I wore this freaking awesome shirt and not a single cast member that works at the ride complimented it or offered to put me in the lightning lane so I can ride as many times as I wanted today until I got conga. Whatever. We're not going to let it ruin our day. We're going to 
go find something to do until we can cross over to Animal Kingdom at 2 p.m. Honestly, I feel like I'd like drive back home and just come back to Animal Kingdom later in the day, which, hmm, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Who knows? Unrelated to Cosmic Rewind, but it looks like they're actually doing some pretty serious construction over here at what's supposed to be the Play Pavilion. This has been closed off for a long time, and they've actually built like a, like a berm, I guess is what you'd call it, this thing here that blocks it. So there used to be a path that led to this building, but now it's not. So it's cute to see that they're actually starting to continue construction on this pavilion, which will be much appreciated, I'm sure, for a lot of people. What I've decided to do to kill some time before we cross over to Animal Kingdom at two o'clock is to actually go to space. All the way up there, space 220. I was able to get a walk-up spot at the bar or the lounge. Um, I waited in line for about 30, 40 minutes. The uh, restaurant opened at 11.30, it's 12 o'clock now. We're heading on in. This would be a great way to kill some time before we head over to Animal Kingdom at two o'clock. Thank you. We got our passport into space. Here we go. You're riding aboard the Mark V Stellavair, the latest in space elevator design and technology. Today, you'll have a spectacular view of Florida and the Eastern Seaboard. Enjoy the ride. I'll be back in a bit with arrival information. Space. Space. Lettuce. Wow. 220 miles above Epcot, and I got the one little corner spot here at the bar. That's perfect. Thank you so much. So I've actually never eaten at the lounge before. I have eaten here, I think, twice now, and I've done like the traditional lunch menu. The lounge menu is different than the lunch and dinner menu, but luckily my favorite thing from the whole menu is available in the lounge. It is the cauliflower, like that spicy fried cauliflower that they serve here. It is so good. And the bartender has like a special secret menu drink that she's gonna make for me and I'm excited to try it because it sounds a lot of fun. She said it was good for social media. So I, I guess this is social media, you know. What was this, oh, Sam, yeah. the fairy godmother? Yes, this is my creation, the fairy godmother martini here at Space 220. So here's our Earthling Gimlet Martini. You have delicious grey juice, vodka in there, super smooth. A little bit of lime juice and a little bit of simple syrup. But that's just the boring part. The fun <laughs> part comes on your end. So here is our magic elixir. Nothing scary in it. It's just a butterfly pea tea flower extract. So it's from a flower, nothing crazy, no flavor whatsoever. But it will change the color temperature of our cocktail. So the little amount you put in there will be more like a pea, like pinkish. If you put the whole thing in, it'll be the most vibrant cocktail you've ever seen. Okay. Uh, the... So really, the artistry is on your end. All right. Well, I guess, I guess uh, toss that uh, yes. extract over here. I have oh, wait. a very important note, though. It won't work, and it won't work unless you say your magic words. I think you Please. know what they are. <laughs> Please. Please and magic thank words you. Your magic words. Okay. Sure. There sure. Okay. So what, you want me to charm the the this first? However you want to do it, you, you're the magic man. Right beep, 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 beep. Have some fun, okay? Beep, 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 boutique. Over here, into the vodka. All right, let's see. This is very spacey looking. Ooh, all right, ready? Here we go. I'm doing this with one hand. I should probably, honestly, not do this. That's okay. Do a little baby bit. Let's see what happens. Ooh, okay. Oh, do I stir it? I think I stir it. Bibidi babidi booty. Ah. And she said if you pour all of it in, it will be the most vibrant cocktail. Let's just do it. Let's just go for it. Boom, baby. Wow. That is so cool. Look at that. Now, I wonder if it tastes good. Look what happens when you stir it. It's like the Milky Way. It's like a galaxy. That is so pretty. That is good. That is a good little martini. It's got the lime, it's got vodka. They can do this with vodka or gin. They said the gin was a lot stronger, so I just wanted like just like something easy. I didn't want to go to like Animal Kingdom wasted. So this is really good. This is very delicious. The fairy godmother drink, the stardust that you pour in there and it swirls is really, really cool. Oh, this is a great little lounge bar experience here at Space 220. I'm having a, a pretty decent time. I'm, I'm happy to wait. <laughs> oh, okay, that was wonderful. That was great. I really enjoyed my time here in Space 220, but I couldn't like milk this all the way until two o'clock. 
So I'm gonna get on out of here, go back to stinky old planet Earth, and figure it out from there. Hmm. But this is great. I'm liking this place more and more each time I visit, honestly. All right, time has been successfully wasted here at Epcot. It is time to get back to my car and drive on over to Animal Kingdom for the true second half of the day. What is this mysterious sidewalk to nowhere? You know, they could finish it and it'll go all the way over there and that'll actually be a pretty more direct route to get to uh, Epcot, but for now it'll just stay like this. I walk a lonely road from Epcot back to my car on this little side path that's kind of out of the way, but my car was all the way in the corner over here, so it just made the most sense. Let's go to Animal Kingdom. Oh, Animal Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Animal, Animal Kingdom, Kingdom. You know, they say this is the hottest of all the Disney parks, but Epcot has like six trees and they're on an island, you can't get to them. Um, okay, uh, I gotta say, Animal Kingdom is the hottest park. Yeah, pretty toasty. Let's start heading towards one of the best rides at Walt Disney World, Expedition Everest. Hopefully, they got that single riders line. Single riders is open, baby. It's got an actually decently long line for single riders. It is pretty filled up, but like, I'm still gonna do it anyway, because the alternative is waiting 45 minutes. But this could also be 45 minutes, who knows? So I had a thought that I wanted to share on the video, but I didn't want to say it out loud in line, for the risk of sounding like a jerk. But sometimes I wish the single riders line was really just for single riders and not families trying to split up so they can get on the ride faster. Like, I'm here by myself. Everyone here around me, they're with their families. I'm the true single rider. I should have this whole line just for me, right? Ooh, and single riders front row, don't mind if I do. See Epcot over there. Oh! Wow! Blow your hair back. Oh, really? <laughs> oh my. It's the number one duck. Where's it going? He's not looking at me. Hey, look at me, number one duck over here, please. Hey, number one duck, can I please get your attention? Can I please get you anybody's attention? Somebody want to look in this general direction? No? Okay. My Disney trip is ruined. All right, I think they're ready for us. Finding Nemo, the big blue and beyond. Got myself a pretty good spot for this show. This is the Marine Life Institute. This is from Finding Dory. So maybe I haven't really looked up too much of the show, honestly. Maybe there are some like Finding Dory elements to it. Come with us as we explore the mysterious world of the open ocean.
I really enjoy that show. I really like that Finding Nemo show. And this new sort of shorter version wasn't awful. Like, it, it makes sense. It kept the really good stuff. There are some things that I miss from the full version of the show. Like, you know, there was a lot more like, um, like I don't know how you call it, but like, you know, they would lift people up into the air and they would do twirls and things like that. And there was a little bit more going out into the theater. Like, there's this really fun part that used to do really well all the time where the guys would be like sword fighting with the swordfish. It's still a great show, and I did something that I don't normally do, which was I actually got a seat closer towards the front for the show, and I got to see all of the performers and see their faces and see how they interacted with the puppets. Um, that made the show so much better. So if you're going to see the show, I would definitely recommend trying to get a spot up towards the front, like closer to the stage, or like that little middle area. You don't have to be right up at the front of the stage. You want to see the whole thing. I don't know. I just love the music. It makes me emotional. Like I was getting like really emotional and something about like the story of Finding Nemo speaks to me as well. Maybe it's like my, 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 my urge to become a good father in the future or I don't know, like my relationship with my father. I don't know. A whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of different reasons. It's a really great show and we don't really need to dive into that right now. But it's all good things. It's all good things. It's a great show, Finding Nemo. I enjoy this version. I think it works for what it is. It's a little shorter. I mean, you're missing some little cool things, but overall, it's still a pretty, pretty good version of a already great show. Well, folks, that is all I've got. That's our show. I had a really fun day here at Disney World. <laughs> I don't know why I say it like that, like it's this unbelievable thing, but it was fun. It was fun. I got a little early for Guardians of the Galaxy, but I think we made it work. We spent some great time at Space 220, and we popped on over to Animal Kingdom saw the great Finding Nemo show, jumped on Everest. Really solid day. Home before five. It is four o'clock. I've been here since, what, nine o'clock, I think. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you had fun having fun with me, and I will see you guys at the next one. Bye-bye.